Right guys, everyone, we shall start. Those who don't know me, uh, I'm Alina. So I started uh, at MEC as a strategy director a little more than two months ago. And I'm also a rookie entrepreneur. What I mean by that, I'm literally probably three months old entrepreneur uh, having started my business like around the same time and joining at MEC as well. Uh, I will start, so the, what you will see today, it's like kind of my experience on becoming or getting to this point uh, and I want to share it with you, just in case maybe there's somebody entrepreneurs amongst you, but this experience has also taught me a lot about myself, a lot about actually what I have in me or what I don't have in me and it's been quite an interesting journey I thought is worth sharing, but let me start by saying that until recently, like probably a year ago, I did not want to be an entrepreneur. That was the last thing I, I ever thought I would want to be. I always was very content that like, well, I'm a strategist. I like thinking, I like seeing problems and coming up with solutions for brands to actually address them. And I kind of didn't think that I had it in me like to, to really to hustle, to go and do what entrepreneurs need to do. Um, and I was like quite, quite happy where I was. <laughs> it was probably until two years ago when things, oh. Oh, sorry. So, all it was anyway, so I, basically what I thought I'm going to do, like a little bit like sort of picture picture or whatever it's called, the name for the presentations, images, just to reinforce what you're saying. So I'm just going to reinforce what I'm saying now. So as I was saying, yes, so, so I started my own business like um, around the same time that I joined NEC, like a few months back. And I never really, until two years back, thought that I would ever even want to be an entrepreneur. I just didn't think I had it in me, and it just didn't really interest me. I was happy being a strategist, and great. And it was until probably two years back when I landed, surprisingly, in, like accidentally in a way, at OMD, um, in creative team run by Adam Bixley. Some of you may know her, some of you may not know her, but uh, she was in a way kind of like a turning point for me to start really thinking about myself differently. Because now with her team, I had to be a creative, not only strategist, I had to kind of think, think about um, solutions to bring to, to your clients differently. And those who know her know that she always goes for that kind of transformational, big ideas, out of box. So I kind of have to start thinking, right, so how, how do I bring some of this thinking to my clients? So what I did is that actually, like, I started setting myself a challenge whenever I got to breathe, I would go away, come up with ideas and strategy that I knew the clients would buy, but just out of fun, I thought, like, right, what I'm going to do it every time, I'm going to come up with an idea that I know that they won't buy, but I can put in my little black book just to kind of start collating stuff that I thought was great, they should be doing, but they just wouldn't buy it. So I started working on this, my little black book, where ideas went in and that kind of if I look back, actually most of those ideas were kind of business ideas, going back to clients' business problems and coming up with a solution that's not a media partnership, solution that's not a creative partnership, solution something that actually would require them setting up a new business or transforming the existing business. And it was kind of all fun and games, I really enjoyed it as kind of my own challenge. But then it kind of, uh, until the point where I was put on a different pitch and the idea that I put forward, which was a new business idea, actually had to be a central piece uh, in the pitch that we ended up winning. So I thought, oh, there is something, something in it. And I know that actually that idea would be, instead of costing client money, would be making, making some money. And I was thinking, like, maybe I should go and do something about it and do one of those number of ideas that I've created for clients that never went anywhere, just like go and do one of them. <laughs> but it kind of, where do you start? Like we are in media, we're like our toolboxes, media partners, um, like maybe like digital uh, companies that can help us uh, execute things. But like if you start a business, you need someone who can write the code, who can build a website, who can design brand, who can actually fill all the things. I was like, was quite daunting. I was thinking, where do I start? So I, for pretty much most of last year, I ended up fuffing around and just being a entrepreneur. Just, oh, I want to do something. I have all these million ideas, but I just don't know anyone who could help me make them happen. And then it was just like in one of those fuffing around sessions with one of my mates. He suggested, why do you not go to Startup Weekend? Right, Startup Weekend, doing digging around, a global movement. 
movement that brings together people like us with ideas, with people, developers and designers who could help you make that idea happen. And then you basically get 54 hours, and in 54 hours, you just have to turn something from an idea, I'm going to do X, to actually a business plan, uh, working website and showing how it works so you kind of have to prove that there is some business. Mm -hmm. So they're like, right, I'm going to sign up. The theme was art. So they're like, right, I'm going to sign up. I'm not only sign up. I'm going to force myself to come up with an idea that is in a way disruptive. I'm going to go there, pitch in front of people I've never met. Uh, scary, all these people like from industry and designers and developers and we'll see what happens. And I probably in the process, I killed like, like I wouldn't exaggerate, maybe 20 ideas. I was thinking, not good enough, not business, no money in there. And then until I landed probably 24 hours before the session, an idea like, okay, what I could do is create a new gallery space or a new network of galleries, bringing artists from one side together with coffee shops. And kind of the great thing is that people are already there, so the audience is there, so all I need to do is bring the two together and host exhibitions. So that was the idea that I went in and pitched in front of like 100 people, and it was like quite scary, like, but in 60 seconds you just have to sell the idea. And the great thing was like, there was like eight equally crazy people who thought that what I, uh, what I said to them made sense, and they sort of like joined my team, and for the next 54 hours we built business plan, developed the site, where I went out and spoke to coffee shops, very apprentice style, what you see, you go in and test it. And then kind of 54 hours later, we had a pitch together. So it was me and another guy standing on the stage, just pitched the idea, and everyone loved it. Everyone loved it so much that we actually ended up winning the thing. So, so far, so good. Everyone was ecstatic. Oh my God, we're going to build this art empire. We're going to be like the next Airbnb. Oh my God. And that was like probably like a week long high, everyone like, oh! And, and me just being the only person, like, now, right, guys, we need to start doing, we need to start building the website, we need to do this. And I had that sense of urgency that I need to go and do it. And everyone just like buffs around, like, doesn't want to do anything. And like, and it started, you could see that actually it, the real team was starting to form, or, not, or maybe actually not forming. So there were, Cracks started appearing, and it all ended up with fights and tears, and everyone was unhappy. So I was like, right, if I want to do it, I have to go and do it by myself. So that was the best decision that I probably, in the whole process, made. I went like 24 hours later. I had a new brand. I had registered in or uh, the domain for the brand. I, I had lined up an artist friend who helped me design the logo. And I had a solution what I'm going to do about the website. I have no idea how to program or anything. But I found out that you actually don't need to. You can actually go and put the building box together and build pretty cool websites yourself. So that's what I did. I just found artists, found coffee shops willing to do it, brought them together, first two exhibitions done, website done, great. So that's kind of like what's happening. So what was happening? That was just literally like a month, a month and a half ago. So since that period, so I now hosted like three exhibitions, which is which is great, but that it's not a lot, but that's what I can do in the hours that I have outside of MEC, because obviously we know like working in media it is a quite tough job, and then going home and trying to to again like organize new exhibitions, doing everything, so it's it's quite tough. But at the same time, it's been incredibly rewarding and you feel like you've accomplished something and it could potentially go somewhere. And that's kind of where I am at the moment. So I have plans like, I have now four coffee shops ready to work. I actually want our own people, Laura, so we saw her the other week. So she, as an artist, wants to exhibit in one of the coffee shops. So kind of new opportunities are popping up. So what else I want to do, I want to be applying for Arts Council uh, for a grant to actually help me build the website and, and create it, actually scale it up so that more artists and more coffee shops and more exhibitions can happen. That's kind of where I see it going. But I think the learnings that I've, I've had in the period, uh, in this whole process and experience is that even if you are thinking at the back of your mind, I could do something, and everyone of us has ideas every, every day, so all you need is that kind of one trigger person, one trigger moment. Sometimes it happens, but sometimes actually you need to push yourself into something like startup weekend, I'm just going to go 
look like an idiot potentially in front of hundreds of people, but at least that kind of kicks it going. But then also like kind of another learning is like you have to be able to enjoy working with people around you. At work we are often uh, pulled together, you can't really choose. So so you you may like all your team, but there might be some people that really kind of get the worst out of you. But like if you're starting up your own thing, you can't afford to have people like who get the worst out of you. Because then it just turns into fight then goes nowhere and everyone's unhappy and that's kind of the last thing you want to do. And and kind of another thing what what I've learned is that like you have to accept that you will have to be a chief everything officer, CEO, chief everything officer. And what that means is that you have to be a developer, you have to be going to, to coffee shops, artists, you have to be, in my case, I have to actually make the, the artwork labels, print, <coughs> print the posters, speak to people, speak to bloggers, be accountant at the end of the day. It is crazy, but at the same time, in like two months, I've learned so much as I have never learned, probably in such a short period of time. So even just for fun, for your experience, it's worth putting you, yourself through through an experience like that because you will see even like work that I do every day, I see it in a different light than I used to probably three months ago. So all in all, it's been a rewarding experience. It is incredibly difficult combining both, but you just that kind of, it's, it's true, the more you do, actually the more you pack into your Work uh, work hours, but also the more you can pack into like going home and doing doing your own stuff. So that's kind of my experience. I thought I wanted to share with you. I was like I wanted to show you the website, but unfortunately it is not working. But um, if you go to www.artsnub.com, you can check it out. It's quite simple, quite basic, but I built it myself, so I'm quite proud about that. So so that's it. Thank you guys. Were there any questions? Um, yeah. Yeah, so how much uh, time do you reckon you you give them to it like on a on a daily basis, on a weekly basis? I think at the beginning, like when I was still with the old team, we were doing like an estimate how much time a week you would spend. And I think I probably said back then like 15 hours. The reality is that uh, it definitely it's one of the weekend days, like Saturday or Sunday, all day I spend working on it. Uh, so I get up every morning like 6 o'clock, just good two hours like doing stuff like writing emails, but also like um, when coming back. Uh, work so I would say probably it is like 20 hours a week um, on top of uh, work. So, but it's, it's it's different. It's the kind of the time flies, and then it's just like oh, you could always be doing more, but then you need like someone like your partner or someone like that, and you have to stop it. I really go mad. And how much do you stuff at weekends? It costs something quick, and then you just go. It's in London, so you get for that money, drinks, and just like meet a lot of people, like out of that, so I'm not in touch with the old team, but I've met like amazing developer that whatever I'm taking it, so that uh, he's, when it's right, I will have a person who can come in and work with me in it. What are the details about this place? Uh, which one? Uh, start of weekend, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Online, so yes, so definitely, it, I, it's just, <laughs> start of weekend, it's literally every month what happens, there's a theme, uh, so I, I was in an art theme, before it was a fashion theme, sometimes it's a fin financial technology theme, sometimes it's medicine, so you kind of, it's themed around uh, interests. Uh, I think just like Google, start the weekend you will find it. Start weekend London, if you will find it, and when the next events are coming up. Yeah. Have you have you had to turn do you start to turn your the idea into more of a business model? And so how do you when where do you start with that in terms of figuring out what you use and costs and business? I am doing it constantly, so that's something I have like built spreadsheets where I'm I'm tracking like 
this is how much money has come in, this is how much money has gone out. The nice thing about this business model, or what I have at the moment, is that it actually doesn't cost me really that much to run it. It costs my time. Um, but the, the, I think the question to what you're saying, Dad, is like at which point it becomes scalable and at which point it really, like re, you start talking about real revenue and real cost. And um, I'm not there yet, but I need to figure out how I can scale this thing up because it's not, it's at the moment it relies very heavily on me actually going, taking that out and doing that. So I need to at some point figure out how I can get to Airbnb, more optimized model, but I was like, I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know how to get there yet. Which area are you targeting? Because I've just this kind of stuff that Sharita she's doing a lot. Yeah. So are you targeting other areas? Are you still staying in Sharita? Are so you doing a little bit everywhere? I started out in Haggerston, which is a little bit more uh, up from um, Shoreditch. The reason about shortage, originally we were thinking shortage, but the reason is that like it's already gallery, not gallery, coffee shops are independently like doing it. So it's actually it's not that they really would need me. So it's almost like it's almost actually starting in places where they are not doing it and branching out from there. So it's like Hagston, Dalston, Stoke Newington, but I myself I'm from Kentish Down, so I'm looking around Camden and Kentish Down. So it's actually like places where I can get the public transport easily. Because if I suddenly need to start travelling to Wimbledon, I don't think I can combine everything like being here um, and I'm doing that, so I need someone else then to do that. Tell me that. You have a question? <laughs> question for Zuna, what's the what is the Okay. okay, so commercial model is at least in current guys, which I'm testing uh, and, and it's working so far, is a commission based. So I basically take a cut from every artwork sold. And I am obviously interested, so I need to think about what artists get exhibited because I don't want to exhibit every, everything and anyone if I know that people are not going to buy it because I, I'm incentivized by actually selling more of their work. The reason why this model I'm currently working with that, uh, with it, it was built on a premise or assumption that artists don't usually have a lot of money to put forward to pay for gallery space, and it's not technically my gallery space, so I can't charge it really. But it's what it seems to be working. But it doesn't. Like having said that, you have to stay flexible when change things. It may at one point actually that what works better is fixed fee that you pay up front uh, in, and then you don't need to worry about promoting it and which is a kind of a lot of, a lot of work in its own right. No, I just, I, I literally engineered it for startup weekend. But the, what I am though, I, I like the other side, well I, I am a buyer. Um, in sense like inexpensive art and I love coffee shops and I feel like, I, like I'm more that side of things but since I've done it like like I've had now like 30 artists that have signed up um, to work with me so it's like it's quite interesting you meet like really really interesting people and then otherwise you would never have met them so yeah are you thinking to explain maybe like um as an agent, because that's kind of like what you're doing. You're taking new artists and you're promoting them. You're putting yeah. them in coffee shops, galleries, which means yeah. if you're taking a commission, yeah. you're doing an agent work. There's like, that's the thing is like what I've learned. And like, whenever you start something, it's like, and in the media agencies, we are almost like, at our work, we are incentivized and, and then asked to think, think big, think all the different things you could do. But if you start your own thing, you almost like have to like think big at the beginning what it could be. But like I have so many thoughts what you could do with it, but you have to cut yourself down. It's like no, you're testing this thing now. Focus on that. Like see if it doesn't work at one point, okay, you try a different model. Or if it works and it builds up to something great, okay, you can start diversifying and see what else you can do. But if, if you just like I could do, you're right. I could be some. I could become a marketplace linking artists to fashion designers, so I could link artists to um, actually kind of start providing service. Oh, 
t-shirt manufacturers. You can teach the uh, art of your t-shirts, and you can. Uh, it's like a lot of artists I work on, illustrators, so you could actually start working, oh, could I start linking them to publishers and finding their works, but it's just too many things, and it was just like focusing on one thing at the time. 